Hi friends, welcome back to Quiet Time. We're going to read chapter 6 in our book. Chapter 6 on page 59. The difficulty with art. On Friday, Mrs. Brisbane added up the points everyone had earned in their jobs during the first week. On the whole, my friends did really well. Miranda had made up some points she lost. Heidi and Mandy lost a few points because they were overly enthusiastic about their jobs. In fact, several people weren't speaking to Mandy for handing out so many messy table notices. Especially Tabitha. Since she had... Since all she had on her workspace was a pile of sharpened pencils, which Heidi had put there. It's not fair. I was only doing my job, Mandy complained. A little too well, said Mrs. Brisbane in her grumpy voice. AJ got full points. Hold on, friends. Sorry, one second. I got to move my camera here for a second. It's up pretty high. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, oh no, I lost my page. Okay, uh, AJ got full points for handing out papers. Tabitha collected homework every single morning, and Richie kept the plants watered, though there was an unfortunate puddle on the floor one day when he overwatered the plants. That plant needs a diaper, Kirk joked. Richie cleaned the water up right away and didn't lose any points. Near the end of the day, Mrs. Brisbane made job assignments for the next week. Seth would take care of Og and me. Heidi would erase the bore while Gail would be the energy monitor. I could tell Saya was glad, glad, glad to be named Mrs. Brisbane's assistant, and Miranda was our new table inspector. No matter what her job was, she was always thinking about me. I heard her tell Seth, please be careful to check Humphrey's lock. Mandy grumbled when she was assigned to water the plants, but I don't think anyone heard her except Og and me. When class was over, Mrs. Patel arrived to pick up Art and me. She is one of our room mothers and lends a hand when our class needs extra help or cupcakes. Yum! I was thinking of not letting Art take Humphrey home until after our big math test this week, Mrs. Brisbane told her. Then I had an idea. Paul Fletcher has been coming into our room for math every day because he's so far ahead of his class. Paul, he lives right across the street, said Mrs. Patel. I know, and I was thinking that if maybe the boys study for the test together, it might help Art. That's a great idea, Mrs. Patel answered. Paul hasn't been over for a long time. He and Art used to play together all the time. Mom, he's a whole year younger than me, Art protested. I don't play with little kids. He's seven months younger than you. You used to like him a lot. Art stood there looking miserable. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, Art, you have to do something to improve your math skills, said Mrs. Brisbane. I can recommend a tutor if you like. Absolutely. Let's get Art some help. He's a smart boy, you know. Mrs. Patel messed up Art's hair and made, he made a face. I know, said Mrs. Brisbane. He's a nice boy, too. You know what? I think we should invite Paul over said Mrs. Patel. I bet he'd like to get to know Humphrey, too. Yes, 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 I squeaked. I wasn't exactly sure if Paul wanted to get to know me, but I certainly wanted to get to know him better. And maybe, just maybe, Mrs. Brisbane had a very good plan. I like plans a lot. We had to climb up many, many steps to get to Art's front door. Mrs. Patel wasn't much bigger than Art, so they each took one end of my cage and carried me up that way. They had trouble keeping my cage level, which meant I was sliding around those, like those ice skaters on Dobbs Pond, except I'll bet they were more graceful than I was. I tried to grab onto something, my ladder, my wheel, the edge of my cage, but as soon as I reached out, the cage would tilt and I'd slide in the opposite direction. Hang on, Humphrey, we're almost there, said Art. I was too weak to squeak. Somehow, we got into the house where I was set down on a table, more like bang down on a table, and Mrs. Patel took the blanket off my cage. Sorry, Humphrey, we did our best. She turned to Art. Why don't you straighten out his cage? Art bent down and laughed. It looks like a tornado hit. Mrs. Patel peered in at me with sympathetic eyes. She reminded me of Miss Mack for a second. Are you okay, Humphrey? She opened the cage door and gently took me out. This was a woman who knew how to handle hamsters. She stroked me gently with one finger while Art straightened out my bedding and put everything back where it belonged. 
I think I'll have to find a special treat for our guest, said Art's mom. Then we'll call Pa. Art leaned down and glumly stared at me. Humphrey, I had a big surprise for you. We were going to have a lot of fun. Now I have to sit around and do my math with know-it-all Paul. Who? I squeaked. That's what some of the kids on the playground call him. Once, I think they made him cry. I guess he can't help being smart, but I wish he wouldn't ruin my weekend. Mrs. Patel came back with a big juicy strawberry for me. I called Paul's mom and she said he'd love to come over tomorrow. Art acted as if he just lost his best friend. He seemed so unhappy, I couldn't even eat my strawberry. I hid it in my shavings and saved it for later. In the evening, Mr. Patel came home from work. <clears throat> he was a kind man in a gray suit and said I was a hamstum gerbil. Art was paying attention for once and told his father that I am a hamster. Mr. Patel nodded and said, a hamstum, handsome hamster. Do you know how to take, a prop, take proper care of him? Art showed him the guide that goes with my cage whenever I go home with students on weekends. Within minutes, Mr. Patel was reading the booklet cover to cover. Very interesting, he said. A few minutes and several pages later, he added, we must plan something, some stimulating activities for Humphrey. Stimulating activities? I like the sound of that. I jumped on my wheel and started spinning like crazy. He is certainly active for a nocturnal creature, Art's dad commented. Can I take him to my room? I don't think you should move that cage around too much. I'll hold him, said Art opened the door to my cage, and you won't let him get away? I understand hamsters are crypt and cr quick and crafty creatures. Art's dad was a pretty smart guy. I promise. Art picked me up and held me with both hands, gently but firmly. Come on, Humphrey, wait till I show you my surprise, said Art, heading down a long hallway. In some ways, Art's room was like most rooms I've seen. A bedroom is basically a square box with windows and a bed. Sometimes there's a desk or a dresser. Art's room had all of those things. In another way, his room was unlike any room I'd ever imagined because just about every single inch was covered with tracks and bridges and houses and trains. Not big trains, but very small trains. There were open cars and passengers and cars and I don't even know about what because I'd only seen trains in pictures. There was a big circle of track in the middle of the room with a bridge going across it. Inside the center of the circle was a town with houses and trees. On the edge of the town stood a red and white tent in a big wheel. What do you think, Humphrey? Art asked as he cupped me in his hands and let me look around. It's unsqueakably sensational. See that lake? Art pointed to a pool of actual water near the big wheel. That's Lake Patel. Blazingly brilliant, I shouted. Ever since I got a train set for my birthday, it's all I can think about. I'm going to... I'm going to have a town in an amusement park. See, there's a Ferris wheel. And I'm going to put a roller coaster and maybe a zoo. Isn't that great? Great, 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 I squeaked. It was great, but now I knew why Art wasn't paying attention in class and why he was doodling all the time. This was what he was thinking about. I could see why. This world he'd created was fun with a capital F. Maybe this fun was also causing Art to fail? which didn't seem fair because you should be able to have fun without failing. Paul wasn't failing, but he didn't act like he was having a lot of fun either. This was all very confusing for a small hamster, but when a human has a problem, I always try my best to help, especially if that human is a friend. Later that night, I was back in my cage and Art was back in his room, probably working on his train layout. I was spinning my wheel when I heard Art's parents talking. We have to do something. His grades are failing, falling every day, Art's mom said. Art thought for a while and replied, I don't understand it. He's always been a bright boy. What does his teacher say? She suggested a tutor. I think it's a good idea, even though I'm not sure all the tutors in the world would make Art pay attention in class. It's that train, Art's dad said firmly. I think we'll have to take it away from him. Once he started with that, his grades went down. I stopped spinning. It made me sad, sad, sad to think of Art losing the train set he loved so much. Art's mom sighed. I'd hate to do it, but we might have to. The Patel sat in silence for a while. Then Art's mom, Art's mom said, Paul Fletcher's coming over tomorrow. Mrs. Brisbane suggested he might help with Art's math. Paul, isn't he a grade below Art? 
Sure is, I guess he's a math whiz, comes into Art's class every day for math. I hope it helps, said Art's dad. Those two were best friends when they were little. What happened? I don't know. Art seems to think that Paul's too young to play with him, but he's only seven months younger. The Patels both chuckled about that. Soon they went to bed and the house was quiet. I had all night to think of a plan. Somehow I had to put two and two together to get Art back on track with his math and with his own old friend Paul. Look who's here, Mrs. Patel announced the next afternoon when the doorbell rang. Paul stood in the hallway holding his math book and, and a notebook. Come on, Art. Mrs. Patel and Mrs. Patel took Paul's coat and hung it in the hall closet while she asked him how he was and how his parents were doing and how school was going. Finally, Art came into the room. He wasn't smiling. Hi, Paul. Hi, Art. They stared at each other for a second. Come say hi to our house guest, said Mrs. Patel, leading the boys toward my cage. I jumped on my ladder and squeaked, hi, hi, hi. It's Humphrey, said Paul. He was almost smiling, I think. That's right. I guess you know him from coming into room 26 for math, said Mrs. Patel. And speaking of math, why don't you boys settle in the kitchen to study? I'll fix some hot chocolate. Neither of them moved. Art, said Mrs. Patel, take Paul to the kitchen. Art grudgingly led Paul into the kitchen and out of my sight. I could hear Art's mom say, here's your hot chocolate, guys. Now, how do you, now, now you know how to study together? I thought we could work out a few problems, Paul said. Art didn't answer. I heard papers shuffling. I heard Paul and Art mumbling, but it was pretty clear there wasn't much happening in the kitchen. Mr. and Mrs. Patel were down in the basement, and I heard her say something about organizing the boxes. There were occasional sounds from the kitchen, once when Paul made a suggestion to Art. I heard a piece of paper being crumbled up. I don't get it. I'm not like you. I'm not some kind of genius. Paul quietly said he wasn't a genius. He just liked math. I hate numbers. They're just squiggles on paper. They don't mean anything, Art burst out. Then things were very, very quiet. I had my plan, but it was risky. The last time I'd left my cage, I'd caused some big trouble, especially for my friend Miranda. Still, I felt like I had to take a chance in order to help Art. After all, he was my friend too. So I opened my good old lock that doesn't lock, grabbed onto the big table leg, and slid down the nice to the nice soft carpeting. I quickly darted under the table to make sure there was no one around. I could hear the boys in the kitchen, and I hadn't heard Art's parents since they went down into the basement. I took a big, huge breath and scampered across the living room, turned left at the hallway, and ran straight back to Art's room. Thank goodness the door was open, or my plan would have ended right there. The maze of train tracks looked much different from Hamster's eye level. There were many tracks going this way and that way and a string of colorful cars attached to a big shiny engine. My plan was a simple one, as most good plans are. I thought the boys would eventually find that I'd gotten out of my cage. They'd search for me and end up in Art's room. When Paul saw, uh, saw Art's amazing train layout, they'd start working on it together and I remembered how much they liked being friends a few years ago. Art would be willing to let Paul help him with his math and his grades would go up. We'd all live happily ever after, except Miranda, of course. I was still feeling guilty about getting her in trouble. Maybe it wasn't such a simple plan after all. It was taking the boys a long time to discover I was missing. I realized it could take them hours, or possibly they'd never notice that I was missing at all. I yearned for my comfy cage that offered so many fun things to do, like spinning on my wheel, climbing on my tree branch, swinging from my ladder, or dozing in my sleeping hut. I was feeling sleepy right then, but I saw a bed that was exactly my size. It wasn't really a bed, just an open arm on the op open car on the train. I scurried over to it and was easily able to pull myself inside and settle down inside. Yes, it fit me perfectly, and what a thrill it was for me to be sitting on a train for the first time in my life. Ahead of me was a tank car made of gleaming metal. Ahead of that was a passenger card with tiny plastic people looking out the windows, and in front of the powerful engine with and in front was the powerful engine with a whistle on top. I was too excited to take a nap. Instead, I stretched out my paws, and as I did, I accidentally hit some kind of switch or lever. I didn't have time to see what it was because when I touched it, the train lurched forward and began to move around the track. 
Once I realized I was going on a train trip, I decided to sit back and enjoy it. I loved the way the train's wheels went clickety-clack on the track and the way it traveled in a wide curve past the general store and the tall pine trees. The train picked up speed and I could feel the breeze in my fur. Everything went dark, completely dark for a long time. At least it seemed long. A tunnel. I hadn't seen that coming. Uh, this is the last page of chapter six. When I came out the other end, the train veered left and began to climb up, up, up. I could look straight down on the roof of the general store and the tops of the tall pine trees. That art was certainly clever to be able to build a bridge. The train stopped climbing and moved across the straight center of the bridge. The trees looked small from what felt like the top of the world, but straight ahead I saw I, I, what I saw was trouble. As the train started down the incline on the other side of the bridge, the bright shiny engine tumbled off the side, pulling the passenger car with its tiny people off the edge, and then the shiny metal tank car. My heart skipped a beat as I realized what was he I was heading for a huge fall, and I wasn't about to land in the middle of Lake Patel. Oh my goodness, that's the end of the chapter. The newspaper article says, Humphrey spends weekend with art. Classroom pet makes his first visit to Patel House. The Humphreyville Herald. My goodness, do you guys think Humphrey's going to be okay? You think Paul and Art are going to find him up there? I hope so. All right, friends, have a great rest. I'll see you tomorrow for Chapter 7. Bye.